Hello, in this video, I want to show a new feature that's rolled out to Google Meet, and that is this whiteboard option that gives you the option to open a jam, which is a jam board. So you can access that by just clicking the three dots in your Meet and choosing whiteboard. From there, you will get two options, either to start a new whiteboard or to choose from Drive. If you choose from Drive, that will allow you to select only Jamboard. So you can't choose a Google Doc there, but you can choose any Jamboard that you may have pre-created for your class ahead of time. I'm going to focus right now on the other options. So I'm going to go to the three dots, whiteboard, and I'm going to start a new whiteboard. What that will do is it will automatically give me the option to add access permission to anybody who is in my Meet. And so, of course, the way that I set up this Meet was through a calendar invite. And that's the reason that we are setting up Google Calendar invites for all of our Meets, so that students will automatically have access to everything that you do within this Meet. They'll have access to the recording after the fact, and now they will also have access to the jams. I'm also gonna show you in this video how you can give them access to a Google Doc right in this Meet session to make things just all in one place a little bit easier. But for now, let me go ahead and change this to editing because I want a collaborative Jamboard with my class. If you had a full class here of 15 students, you would see all students' names pop up at once and all you have to do is press the send button. That will pop open the Jam. Again, it's automatically shared with my student. And now I'm gonna take you over to the student view so you know what to expect on their end. Here is the student view. So it does not pop up the Jamboard automatically for the student, but it does drop it in the chat. Automatically, it drops the link in the chat so that students will see it there, they can click the link, and boom, they will be able to open up the Jamboard. So now I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side view. So on the right is my student view, on the left is going to be my teacher view. I want you to see how real time this really is. So I can use some of the pen tools. You can see how real time this is working. I can use the eraser if I need to. I can use the arrow tool to select certain things. Then there is a sticky note. I can change the color. When you're done, just click off of it. You can move that sticky note. You can resize the sticky note. You can rotate the sticky note just like that. On the student end, they can do the same thing. If you click on the three dots, that will give you the option to edit or duplicate. You can also change the order to change how they stack. If you want this to be behind, you can change that just like so. Now, one thing to note is that I only see who is editing this as they are clicked on it, but I cannot ever go back and see who has created which sticky note. So that is something to know about Jamboard. You might have students type their name at the bottom of the sticky. If you want to know who typed what after the fact, there is the ability to add in an image. So you can drag that from your computer. You can also select it from Google Drive. You have some shape tools. You can just click there to get different shapes. I'm gonna go with the circle. There we go. If you wanna change the color, just click on it. And up here, you can change the border color and you can also change if you want it to be filled in. And then you have text, if you just wanna type text. With the text, the options up here would allow you to change the color and change kind of the boldness and the format of that. The last thing is this laser tool, and that is a laser pointer. So that can definitely be helpful if you wanna point things out. You do want to just hold down and click to make the laser pointer go. So if I just move the laser pointer, nothing happens. But if I click and move, then you can see that showing up on the student end also. So you can work on this collaborative Jamboard without having to do a screen share and everybody can work on it together or you can change the share permissions at any point if you want students to just be a viewer for this one, for example. 
I'm gonna go ahead and close this for now and show you how you can access this Jamboard at any point during class easily. So down in this left corner, if you click on it, there's actually this attachments view. And I'm gonna show you how to add a Google Doc in a second, but you'll see that that Jamboard that I created, it was saved right there. So if I click on it, I can reopen that Jamboard easily. I forgot to say that you also can add another page. So you can just click here to add another page and you can change what type of background you have for this page by clicking on background and changing the background. So there are a couple of different options. You can't create your own, but you can choose from the ones that they have available to you there. There is also an undo and a redo, and I do caution this clear frame actually clears the entire frame, like anything that you had done. So make sure that students aren't pressing that clear frame button. You might go over, just don't use that clear frame button because that can cause some issues. There isn't a revision history in Jamboard, unfortunately. So let me go back to my meet and explain more about how I got this Google Doc as an attachment here so that students kind of are able to just click and access everything they need for class all in one place without having to rely on dropping everything in the chat, for example. So when I set up my meet through the Google Calendar invite, I invited my students, obviously. For any calendar day that you want to add an attachment, you can easily do that by just clicking add attachment right here. So let me show that again. So it's not this insert link, but it's this first add attachment. And then you can choose any Google Doc, any Google Slides, really anything from your Google Drive. And when you select it and you save that calendar invite, then those attachments are available for your meeting. So you can even do that during the meeting after it's launched, that's not a problem. And then you can just click on any of those and it would open right up. Let me also show you if you're on this like quick add screen, then you can also add an attachment by just clicking on this attachments button right here. And then you can pull in any Google Doc etc. You don't need to be in that more options screen to add an attachment. Okay, I think that's really it as an overview of how to get started with Jamboard. Jamboard is pretty simple and I've just shown you the features here on the web app. There are actually some more features if you're using the iPad app, but here's the pen. You have several different pen tools to choose from. So you can have like a highlighter for instance, but the options you have there are pretty simple. There aren't many different options for like changing the thickness and stuff like that. You have a pencil, you have a marker, you have a highlighter, and you have a brush like that that's very transparent. Then you have the eraser that works like a normal eraser. You have the pointer and that would move any objects that you have. It does not move any of the text that you've drawn with a pen. You cannot move any of that. You have the sticky notes, change the color, and you can change the size, of course, like what we talked about, and rotate. Then you can add an image. You can add it right from your Google Drive. You can actually mark any of that up. So if I want to use the pen tool to mark it up, I can do that. If I press the select tool again, I can choose if I want to make it move to the front or the back, if I wanted it behind something else. Let's send to back and then you can see the circle comes on top. Then there was the shape tool. So again, just click the little arrow to get more shapes. You can change the color and the border right here at the top. The text box was this text box here and then the laser pointer. And again, to use the laser pointer, you just wanna click down and it kind of drags that laser pointer as a laser pointer would work. That's really all. Oh, at the end, you can click these three dots and you can download as a PDF or save the frame as an image if you want to save that for later. But these are all accessible in your Google Drive. So once you go to your drive, the Jamboard is going to be in your drive already. So here's what I mean. I created this Jamboard and it's saved in my Google Drive and I can just open it and access it at any point that I want. And that's really it. That's an overview of how to get started with Jamboard in your Google Meets. I hope that's helpful. Bye.